You and I have got to grasp the context of this passage if we're going to rightly understand it and have any hopes of applying it properly to our lives. You see, if you've been in the church or if you know your Bible somewhat, you may be there to say, oh, this is the healing of the lame man in Acts. This, in fact, I know this is the first miracle healing, the first miracle done by the apostles in the book of Acts. You might even say, hey, I know Acts chapter 3. It's really made up of two parts. There is a miracle and then there is a sermon, all of which would be true. But I need to back up with you to Acts chapter 2, where we were last week, when we looked at the church, the New Testament church being born, and we saw that this called out, set apart, spirit-filled people were unique in that by the grace of God and for the glory of God, they were devoted. They were all in people, devoted to the teaching of the apostles, to the truth of God's word, to the fellowship, to the koinonia, the love and the unity of God's people, to the remembering of Christ crucified and Christ risen, both in the form of taking the Lord's Supper and then having what we call the love feasts together, and to being devoted to prayer. Well, we ended chapter 2 seeing that God declares that not only was that true now as his spirit has come, the people of God who received the promise of God have now been empowered by God exactly as he said it would happen in Acts 1.8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes and then you will be my witnesses locally, regionally, and globally. Right? And then we saw, and then the Lord was adding to their number daily the miraculous work of God's grace as he built his church, as Jesus said he would. Well, now we find ourselves coming into chapter 3. And my prayer is that you will see that this is now going to be an illustration. It's going to be an application of the people of God. Well, now in Acts chapter 3, we're going to see these people of God going and actually becoming devoted to that prayer, to that time of teaching of the truth, to that time together, to the remembering of Christ. And there are four key parts between where we are now and as we approach the end of chapter 4 of Acts. So let me tell you the parts. This week we'll unpack and look closely at the introduction. In the next couple of weeks we'll look at the centerpiece and in three or four weeks out we'll finish. God is going to share some show and tell with us from the end of Acts 2 to nearly the end of Acts 4. God told us his plan in Acts 2. He showed us a portrait of his people. In Acts 3, we're going to see a miracle that God has used to draw attention to himself and to his glory. There was a plan in Acts 2. There was an experience at the beginning of Acts 3 And from the latter part of Acts 3 through the latter part of Acts 4, you're going to see the explanation. We're going to see a sermon from Peter following up this miracle. And then we're going to see a response to the sermon that was built on the platform of the miracle, which was altogether an explanation of how God built his church by drawing people unto himself. So I want you to think about Acts chapter 2, verse 42, all the way to Acts chapter 4, verse 31, as one section of Scripture. It is fully related. You get the plan, you get the experience, then you get the explanation, and then we will see the response, all of which will show us how God builds his church. And I promise you, friend, you will see yourself in this passage. You will see yourself... As we walk through this part of the book of Acts, we are here. You are here. And I can say this unequivocally because no matter where you are in your walk, you're represented. I pray that we'll rightly identify where we are and then follow the Lord as he leads us through this.